Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, Amateur Radio Call Sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we take a question from Keith, W9OMW. And he says, regarding ham radio vertical dipole installation, measuring a half wavelength up from the ground to install dipole is at the height where the bottom of the lower pole should be or where the center feed in the middle between the poles should be? And the answer is kind of neither. What we're going to do first is take a look at what the half wavelength height refers to, which is a horizontal dipole, and then second look at different ways of mounting uh, vertical antennas, uh, which was addressed in the October issue of QST. Let's take a look. Okay, so uh, if we have a horizontal dipole, and here's the center section fed by coax, okay, this distance to ground If it is one half wavelength, uh, if you look at the uh, side view of the elevation, it's as low as it will go and still maintain a single lobe on each side. If you move it down, you move the lobes up. Okay, so the closer to the ground, the higher angle at which it radiates. Now, if you move it above a half wave, what happens is that these lobes start to bifurcate, and you start putting energy right here. Whereas if you get it all the way to uh, a full wavelength, you will have two lobes like this with a deep null in between the lobes. Now this lobe will go down, okay, so you'll actually be reaching further out, but you're putting one half your energy into these upper lobes right here, plus you've got the deep null. So that's why sometimes it's advantageous to keep things lower. Now if you have a multiband antenna, say that this is a uh, 40 meter here, 40 on the top, and then you've got connected over here a 20 meter, that's 40, a 20 meter. Now if the 40 is at a half wave above, a 20 obviously is a full wave above. So you get this bifurcated pattern on the 20, whereas you get the nice single lobes on the 40. And this we will call the dilemma of multiband antennas. Okay, and that is that there's no way to have them all at the optimal altitude because the altitude depends upon the wavelength that we're dealing with. Okay, that's all fine and great for horizontal antennas. Vertical antennas are another matter entirely. <clears throat> the classic way to mount an antenna here is on the ground. Okay, so this is on the ground right here. All right, and you've got this, this makes it look like there's a distance there, but there's uh, just a break, and then the bottom of this. This is a quarter wavelength vertical, a feed line, and radials. This is your classic vertical. It's quarter wave with radials. Now, if you happen to have a half wave and a dipole that's end fed, okay, like the Cushcraft, uh, our series of antennas, which are very nice antennas. They used to have an R7. Uh, this is coax here. What you want, you want this about 10 feet in the air to the bottom 
of the antenna, you're going to feed it end fed. End fed means there will be a counterpoise out here. Often it comes out this way too. Okay, and then your, your end fed half wave dipole. Now, if you're going to uh, feed it in the middle, which is perfectly legitimate, you take your half wave dipole, feed it in the middle. Okay, this comes out straight for uh, maybe a, a quarter wavelength or half wavelength before you take it down to the antenna. It'd be nice probably to put this, and this is a rough rule of thumb, uh, 10 feet in the air to the bottom of the end fed dipole. Okay, note that the half wave doesn't figure in here at all because this is a vertical antenna and it will have a very low or nice low radiation pattern off of the thing. So three ways here you've got center fed, uh, half wave dipole, vertical. This is only practical on, well, you could do it on 40. Uh, or you feed at the end with uh, a 49 to 1 ballon or something like that, or you get the R series, which is a multi band antenna. And they say to put it about 10 feet in the air, or you can roof mount it or something like that. And then they do have little counterpoises here, but those are not grounds. That's counterpoise. Of course, your antenna always goes to a ground here, the mast. This one here, we've got something in here that'll keep this from falling over and keep this from touching the ground. Okay, and all commercial verticals have a place to do that. Uh, if you're going to put in a lot of radials, um, DX Engineering makes a uh, very nice radial plate you can connect your uh, radials to. It's, it's a very nice uh, little thing. Okay. So I think we've answered the question from Keith regarding a vertical dipole installation, which is this third case right here, uh, measuring a half wave long up. The half wave has nothing to do with the vertical antenna. That is a measure for a horizontal antenna. Is that the height of the bottom? Now just get, I would say get the bottom up about 10 feet from ground if you can. Uh, this is a rough estimate here as is this. Um, and then that way this can radiate without too much interaction with the ground. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, Keith, I hope that answers your question here. This is from Keith W9OMW. And please uh, go ahead and uh, try that antenna in a variety of heights and I think you'll have a great antenna there. Hopefully you've got some tall trees or something that can hold that thing up. That is a, a, a nice way to do things. There you have it. There's going to be uh, several uh, screens after I say 73 that have got uh, useful information in them. Please take a look. And until we next meet, 73. <music>